I'm here at the Black Magic stand, well, the back of it in the press area. Um, there's no way we could have fitted in the front. And uh, I've got Simon Westland here. And uh, Simon, we're going to look over this new baby. This is the new Black Magic Ursa. It is, yes. Tell us a bit about this thing. Gosh, yeah, really exciting, John. We're really pleased to announce this here at the show. Uh, this is a new full size production camera, it's a 4K camera. Uh, which we're going to be supplying in a number of different models. There's an EF and a PL, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a second as to as to why that does it. But maybe we just sort of have a look a bit sort of around that camera. Um, so you'll see on the camera that actually it's designed to be used by almost a team of people um, in the way that we've designed zones of operation around the camera. Here at the back end of the camera, you've got all the audio meters and all the level control, uh, your ability to mute channels or select channels, uh, solo channels. You've got all of your video in and out here. It's 12 gig SDI on this camera. Um, you'll also see this is one of three displays that are featured in the camera. And on this side of the camera, typically you'd have a camera assistant and the audio engineer working. So they've got access to the menus. And these are the same touchscreen menus as you're familiar with within the Blackmagic Cinema camera. So you can literally scroll through all those and make your changes as you go. Uh, but you can also get a video display if you wanted to. It's not very interesting at that stage. Um, but you get all of your menus. It's got the familiar slate within there uh, for all of the camera metadata. Also on this side we've got phantom powered XLR audio input which is great, a, a really popular request from, uh, from camera users. Here we've got an additional 3 gig SDI out with a 4 pin power out in case you wanted to mount an EVF separate. If the three LCDs are not enough, yeah. then, we, then we'll let you mount yeah, a further yeah. display on the front. So I'll spin this round and we'll look at the, at the other side first. One of the things that is, is concealed on this side that will open up is that there's a huge 10 inch display. So this is an enormous viewfinder for the DOP uh, to be on this side of the camera. Um, and they've got sort of controls here where they can do playback of uh, previously recorded shots. Uh, they can turn the display on and off, etc. They've got access to the same menu. So all the menus that are available on the other side of the camera are also accessible here. Uh, camera records to dual CFast cards. So again, the perpetual record. When one disk is full, it automatically continues onto the next disk. If we spin it all the way back around, I talked a little bit about we're going to have an EF and a PL version of the camera. We're also going to have more versions of this in the future. This camera has been designed to be user upgradable. What we mean by that is that the sensor and the mount are contained in this front turret on the camera. Um, there's four bolts here. Undo those four bolts and you can put a new sensor and mount into the camera. So even if you were to buy the EF model, if at some point you wanted to change and upgrade to a PL mount, then you could do that. But also in the future, we're going to do a broadcast B4 mount. Right. And I think as new sensors come out, yeah. uh, we can do a lot of fun things in yeah. terms of upgrading the, uh, upgrading the camera for, for different purposes. So, I mean, there's a massive advantage to that in that when, when you, you purchase this camera, it's not something that you think, oh, this is going to be outdated in 12 months time. We need to start thinking about what we're going to buy next. You, you've bought a system that can keep you going for many years. Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, it's a, it's a bit more expensive than the previous cameras, and I think that if you're going to spend that much money on a camera, it's not so expensive, it's $6,000 for, for the EF. But if you are going to spend that much money, you do want some future proof. You do want some longevity in that purchase. And I think the ability, I mean, we don't know what the pricing will be of the replacement um, mounts there, but we, we expect something around $1,500 to $2,000 would, would be typical. But it does give you that option. I think there's some, uh, there's some future proofing in that. Simon, that's great. Now, this is obviously brand new, first time we've seen this. Uh, and as always, people are going to ask, what's the availability on this unit? This one's going to ship in July. Yep. Yeah. That's uh, pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite impressed. Yeah. Um, and this will be available initially as the EF and the PL? EF and PL to begin with, uh, broadcast B4 later in the year. And also, actually quite an interesting one, we're going to do a model that doesn't feature a mount or a sensor. And simply has a cheese plate on the front yeah. so that in actual fact what you could do is you could take the camera you already use and mount it on the front of this body and use the professional recording features of this but mount a 5d yeah. or a gh4 or whatever you wanted directly on the front of the ursa amazing as always if people want to find out more information what's the website they can look at blackmagicdesign.com
Simon, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Uh, yet again, they've done it. Another one from Blackmagic. Uh, go and have a look at the website, find out more information about this amazing camera. We've done another video here at the Blackmagic site as well, so go and have a look at that. Uh, that'll be a link below me as well. In the meantime, everything else we've done here at NAB 2014 is on our website, broadcastshow.com. Yeah, everyone's been just like, go on, hands on, go get the cameras out there. It's fantastic, they're all really open, let you just touch everything and get to use it and experience it for yourself.